Hi and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with transfer and moved to Arsenal. Uh, welcome along to the show today. You know what? First of all, I've got to say, um, I don't know if you saw it, I think most people were watching last night, even though we're Arsenal fans. We were watching that big game last night, Liverpool versus Manchester City. Man City winning the game by two goals to one and our invincible status at Arsenal is still intact. Liverpool have been unbeaten up until then, but it just goes to prove how difficult it is to go a season um, unbeaten. Um, you know what though, one thing about that game, when I was watching it, I was like, you know what, those two teams are on another level to Arsenal right now. That's what I was watching and that's what I was looking at and I was saying to myself that to get to that level, Arsenal need more investment. They need more investment in the team because the players that were on that pitch, the quality all round was just of the highest level. And I look at our team and I'm like, we're not there yet. We're not there. This is where Unai Emery needs to get us to. But how is he going to get us there if he doesn't get the right amount of investment? I know I moan about this a lot, but it's the reality of things right now. And it's really interesting yesterday that I was looking at a report from um, a guy called Swiss Ramble, who's like a football financial expert, and it was a brilliant, brilliant report. First of all, I'd say, big him up, man. That was a great report that he did. And um, I think his uh, Twitter account is at Swiss, at Swiss Ramble. Check it out. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable when you read it. And um, he was talking about investment and what clubs have invested in each of their individual clubs in the Premier League over the last 10 years. And just going through here, I've got some of the figures here, right? Um, this is some of the money that's been invested by some of the clubs. It's no surprise that number one in that list of investment is Manchester City. They've invested £1.275 billion into the club um, since their owners took over. Of course, we know that club's virtually run by a country, but you can see by their bench yesterday with De Bruyne and people like that on it, you know, they've got a lot of money in their team. Chelsea have invested 520 million. That's Roman and Bramovich, of course. Manchester United's owners, who uh, run a similar type of model in a way to what we're doing at the moment, Arsenal, 318 million. Liverpool have invested, now remember, as I said, this is personal investment by the owners, 257 million. Um, number five in the list was Leicester. Um, their owner, rest in peace, he invested 208 million. How much do you think Arsenal's owner, Stan Kroenke, has invested over the last 10 years? Out of his own money. Not talking about, you know, what Arsenal have made from sponsorship deals, from ticket sales, TV money. This is all based off of what the owners have invested their own money. <clears throat> How much do you think Arsenal's owner Stan Kroenke has invested in 10 years of being at Arsenal? Zero. Nothing. Not a penny of his own money has been invested into Arsenal Football Club. Everything has just come from what we've earned. As a matter of fact, according to um, uh, Swiss Ramble's list, um, only um, Middlesbrough, the only other club that came up into the Premier League in that time, are the only other club um, where, you know, basically they've invested no, they invested no money. And where are they at the moment? They're, they're in the championship. Stan Kroenke is worth £7 billion. Yeah, £7 billion. That's his estimated worth. He's worth £7 billion, and according to that, he's invested none of his own money in the club, which I just think is just unbelievable. Well, as we know now, Stan Kroenke, he owns 100% of the club. You know, he, uh, um, he bought off all the other shares of Usmanov and uh, some of the other owners there. They had to sell them his shares, and um, he now owns the whole club. But what I'm hearing as well is that he borrowed the money right, to pay for those shares. And he's paying an interest of £18 million a year for those. Um, he's taking, now this is what the, the rumour is saying, that he's taking about £4.5 million a quarter 
out of the club's earnings at the moment to pay that and to service that interest, which is very similar to what the owners of Manchester United were doing. Um, so he's still not really spending any of his own money to run this football club. I mean, it's just, honestly, it's, it's unbelievable at the moment. So therein lies a lot of Arsenal's problems, coupled with the fact that, as I said, you know, we've been doing business badly over the last few years. So we've not been able to do what Liverpool have done and have a Philip Coutinho type player where we sell him for like 100 million then use that money to then reinvest or similar to what Tottenham have done. And so, right, we've had no players of any value. So it's just a really bad situation as far as I'm concerned at the moment. The only good thing about the situation at the moment is that we've got this recruitment team of uh, Miss Lintat, Sanelli, these guys in place who look like they know what they're doing in the transfer market. And I think we're gonna be heavily reliant on them over the next couple of seasons with Unai Emery making good decisions in the coaching to get us back to where we want to be. But at the moment, our owner is just not putting any of his own money in the club. And this is a time, I feel, where he should be doing that because, you know, we ain't in the Champions League at the moment. And if we want to get back into the Champions League, the club needs investment. It needs investment in players if you're going to get those top level players. As I said, when you, you look at that game last night, that's the top level, right? That's the top level that we want to be at. So it, 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 when you see that, you know, I think we're going to be, have to definitely be on the case of this owner to make sure that over the next couple of seasons, you know, now that he's 100% owner, remember, he doesn't even have to disclose anything no more. Before, they had to disclose stuff of, you know, certain things to do with the finances. Now he doesn't have to disclose anything, right? We need to, we need to um, sort of get on what's going on at Arsenal right now. You know, he doesn't have to disclose anything no more. So, Aaron Ramsey. Now, again, this is a product of the last regime where they didn't sign him up to a new contract. Uh, a guy who's been at a club 11 years, won us the FA Cup twice, has been a great servant to the club, great player. Came on the other day, scored two goals. He's on his way out. We know that. Um, lots of rumours that it's a done deal now, that he's agreed a deal with Juventus um, and he will sign for them. A five-year contract, the rumours said to say. Um, and that he will join in the summer. Some rumours even suggesting that he could go at the end of um, January, um, and it could be announced in, you know, he could, he could go this month in January. If not, it will be announced at the end of this month that he will be joining Juventus in the summer, and that's a great deal for Juventus. Again, another club in Juventus. You look at the business that they do. They do brilliant business. They seem to pull off a lot of these excellent loan deals or excellent deals where they take players where the contracts are going down. They really run a, a really, really good ship and you can see the success that they've had. So Ramsey looks like he's definitely on his way to Juventus and that's going to be an incredible move for him. Champions League football, you know, be great. Coming the other way, according to some rumours, could be Sami Kadira. Now, Sami Kadera, he's 31 now, German international. We were linked with him for years and years and years. As a matter of fact, just after we so signed Mesut Ozil, there was a lot of people suggesting that we should go out and get him as that sort of defensive midfielder type player. Um, and he would have been perfect for us. Good friends with Ozil as well. Um, we missed the boat on that one and he ended up going to Juventus. Lots of rumours suggesting that um, Juventus is uh, saying, you know, give us Ramsey now and we'll make Kadera come the other way. Um, now, you know, a couple of years ago, I would have been, yeah, that's a decent deal, but he's 31 now, and yet again, it's almost like it's just the players at the end of their career, cast-offs that we're getting, but Kadera linked with a move um, to Arsenal today. Um, the Kayla Navas thing, which for the past couple of days, I ain't been able to get my head around, I've been going, why? Arsenal, I mean, because there's strong, strong rumours coming out of um, Spain that Arsenal want to sign Kayla Navas. And I was like, why? We got Czech as the backup goalkeeper. We got Emilio Martinez. We've just bought Leno for 20 million. Why would we want to get Kayla Navas, right? Turns out that we're not going for Kayla Navas. And I'm glad about that um, because that's not the priority goalkeeper. Um, Navas apparently has signed um, a contract extension now, Real Madrid, so he'll be staying 
at Madrid for at least another season. And also Unai Emery in his press conference ahead of the FA Cup game saying that, you know, Arsenal have got no interest in signing Kayla Navas. Phew, I'm so glad about that one. Um, it looks to me like it's been a masterstroke by Kayla Navas's people. And this happens a lot in transfer windows where they link a player to a club. His agent will talk it up and get a couple of, he'll ring up a couple of newspaper guys that he knows and says, yeah, I'll get, you know, spread this rumour, spread this rumour. I'm not saying this is exactly what happened in this case before I get sued. But this is what the general thing that can happen in football sometimes. And then, you know, he gets linked to different, different clubs and that enables him to get a new contract at the club where he's already at or push the value up of his contract. It happens all the time. It kind of seems to me in this one that this is a classic case of that with Kayla Navas, but he is not going to be joining Arsenal Football Club. Um, what about Eva Benega though? Could he be joining... Rumours are back um, that Arsenal want the Sevilla uh, midfielder, creative midfielder, really, really top player. Again, 30 now, so I'm not sure about the age thing, but um, he's worked with Unai Emery before, as we all know. He is a top, top player. Um, Arsenal really, really want him. Unai Emery really, really wants him, apparently, but he's been umming and ahhing about staying in Spain um, because, you know, he's a real family guy and he really wants to, you know, stay in Spain, but... There's lots of rumours today that um, coming out of Spain that Benega um, may be willing to join Arsenal this month. So this is one we're going to have to keep our eye on for this month. Or could it be Denis Suarez? Denis Suarez, again, a uh, Barcelona player. He looks to be on his way out of Barcelona this month. He's made it quite clear that he wants to um, have more playing time. He's hardly figured for Barcelona this season. Um, and... Um, Arsenal being heavy linked to the 24-year-old talented midfield player, actually. Of course, as I said, if Ramsey's going to be on his way out, these are the sort of players that we you know, need to consider trying to bring in. Um, but he's one of those players that's sort of under the radar, but you never know. If he went to a club that showed him the full love, he could blossom. Um, linked heavily with Arsenal for this January transfer window. That is a possibility for the window. Arsenal said to prefer to take him on loan, um, Barcelona want to sell him. They want the money for him. Uh, Chelsea apparently interested in him as well. And there's a lot of rumours saying that Chelsea might be willing to pay the money. And as I said, right at the start of the show, you see the money that Chelsea put in. I'm not saying that Kronke should put in the same amount of money as a Roman Abramovich. Well, actually, I am saying that. It'd be great if he could do that. Uh, but you see what Chelsea are ready in this transfer window. Their fans are moaning about, you know, them not signing players and stuff like that. They've just bought Pulisic. And he's not even coming in till the end of the season. You know, um, that's the difference. 50 odd million pounds, which is more than literally our whole transfer budget for last summer. May I, I don't need to say more. Um, and then there's Nicolas Pepe. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, Arsenal said to be really interested in this guy. He's been playing brilliantly for Lille this season. Lille, who are second in the uh, French League, league earn at the moment. Um, and Arsenal... Really interested in him. He valued at 50 million euros. We've spoken about him on the programme um, a couple of times already. Um, 12 goals already this season, although five of those goals are penalties. So I don't think we have to remember that. But he has scored 12 goals um, this season. Lille saying that he won't be sold in January. Arsenal said to really want him in January. But Lille saying, you know, they don't want to sell him. Obviously, they're in a good position. They want to get into the Champions League. Um... Would Arsenal fork out the 50 million euros or it could possibly be more if they was to prize him away from Lille um, in January? I very, very much doubt it. But there are some papers today and media outlets suggesting that Arsenal might be willing to do that. Let's wait and see what happens with that one over the January transfer window. Listen, thanks for watching the show today. It's Blackpool in the FA Cup um, this weekend. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, don't forget to check out the preview that will be out later on today. On AFTV, we've also got a podcast. See, our podcast today, we'll be discussing that. I mean, we'll discuss that with DT, what I was talking about at the start of the show, about the lack of investment um, in Arsenal. So, I think it's the right time to talk about this, considering we go to play Blackpool, who their owners, oh my God, I think we moan, they've got it terrible there. Um, so make sure you check that out as well. And check out Blood Brothers. Um, the series has been killing it on YouTube. 
Um, series four is out. I've watched it about three times. It's really, really good. Make sure you check that out as well. Thanks for watching the show and we'll be back tomorrow.